Most people view homelessness as an individual problem. The broad public view homelessness as a failing of individuals, that people choose to be homeless, that they're weak, that if only they got over their addictions, if only they just got a job, then homelessness would be fixed. And I, I think that's a, not the wisest way to look at the challenge. That I, the folks that you see in Marshak Housing, Boyle Street, the community services works with on a regular basis, are people that are dealing with child abuse, uh, racial discrimination. Uh, and often this is what has led to uh, self-medication and a, a life of addiction. That if you don't have access to proper services, mental health services, counseling services, employment services, uh, often what folks end up doing is that they'll self-medicate. And that often ends up with addictions and homelessness and that spiral where people are not really reaching their potential. I mean, we have to deal now with the people that are uh, living, sleeping rough, and living on the streets, and, 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 and need support. So we have to address their needs with, you know, an increased investment in, in housing and housing support. My name is Jared Kachuk. I am an outreach worker at the Stanley Milner Library downtown. Uh, I'm part of a brand new outreach project at the library. There's just a lot of people at the library every single day coming in there who were homeless, had mental health issues, addictions issues, um, just all sorts of issues. The library really wasn't designed to deal with those kinds of issues, but they were seeing these people day after day. Our primary objective is, is to try to bridge people to services that are out there that might help them take some positive steps forward in their lives or just to meet basic necessities. So a lot of people that we're meeting basically have no hope, have no real faith that things could be different in their life and we just try to empower them with, with a sense of companionship and, and then try to decide along with them which resources might, might help them. I mean the major one is often housing is, is the biggest one. You know a lot of times there's the, there's the waiting lists for those programs and, and you have to be within a certain criteria to get, to get involved with them. Um, so we rely a lot on um, Martishuk housing and just some private landlords that we can that we can make uh, relationships with and get to know and have them trust us a little bit. We get a lot of people into the initial resources. Um, I think one of the main things is to find them supportive resources as well um, because sometimes even if you get a person into uh, an apartment let's say if they have mental health issues or addictions issues that aren't being met that person could could easily fall through the cracks again in, in, in a short time. So Places like, uh, places like Mars Shock Housing, they have good um, supports in place that are going to help the people not just get housed, but stay housed, which is so important. So we'll bring the cleaners in, uh, clean it up, and uh, you know, repair the damage and let them back in. Once we get him set up on his medications and, and get him stabilized, he'll likely be okay. It's just sometimes that when they go off their medications, they, um, you know, they go awry on us, and this is the result. Okay, Jesse, this is the problem. Yeah. I've got a trashed unit over there. Okay. Did you trash it? Uh, I got upset one day and fucking, you know, it's fucking crazy. Man. You know, like, I got upset one day. Did you go off your medication? No medication. I was, I was on medication at the time. I was, I was off medication. And like, you, know. you did quite a bit of damage to that unit, Jesse. Did I? How bad is it? Like, how bad is it? It's bad. I can't even remember. It's been a while. It's bad. It's so okay, I have yet to hear a reasonable explanation as to why your unit has been trashed. How long have you been off your medication? Five, six days. Four. Okay, Jesse. I'm going to talk to your nurse. We're going to get you set up on your injection. Yeah. Why did they take you off your injection? I choose to take off my injection, yeah. Okay. 
called? It was my, it, it was like my choice, whatever, you know, or was this like I'm crazy, you know? Like, okay, Jesse, the only way <clears throat> I can get you back into housing is if you cooperate with us, okay? Yeah. I'm gonna talk to your nurse, ask her to do an assessment. Yeah. Okay? And if required, then we're gonna get you back on the injection. Yeah, I can ask home care to give you a witness dose. They'll give you your medication every day. Yeah. If we get you back on your medication, I think you have a good chance of sustaining your housing. Otherwise, it's Herb Jameson. Yeah, yeah like, what, what, what I thought was it? What, what I thought was one of uh, obtain and stuff seeing, you know? Like, I was thinking, like, maybe, like, We've been here since February the 2nd of 2012. Uh, we now share this room with home care. And this is basically our, the medical clinic. And they're all Marty Chuck's clients that we see. They have to come from Marty Chuck's housing or homes or whatever it is. So that's where we see most of the clients. And when we first started, we thought, well, it might not be that busy, but, uh, in the year, this is our filing cabinet here. And as you can see, I think we've got somewhere in the vicinity of about 50 patients already. So ours is mainly to diagnose, to get the medications, get them back, and then start treating them till you get them balanced on their medications. Once they're on their medications, you know, a lot of them are um, psych patients. You know, so you get, you get a variety. It's just a, uh, real variety. And I think it's mainly people that are over the 35, you know, we get seniors here too, quite a, quite a lot of seniors that you're seeing too, which is, is sad, you know, but they also are part of our healthcare zone. Yeah. You can tell when, you know, someone comes in for intake and you've offered them a, a home, a relief comes across them and uh, you know that you know they're thanking their lucky stars this is their day you know, take it off the streets and a lot of the people that Marshak housing houses are individuals who've been living on the streets for years I've, I had a guy come in he's been homeless for 23 years living downtown in the River Valley he was addicted to everything, and uh, within six months of housing him, his uh, alcohol consumption and drug use began to decrease, and uh, little things like, you know, coming into the office or phoning us and asking us um, if we could help him to get in to see a doctor because he felt his medication was off a little bit. So it says something when an individual like that calls you um, and asks if we could assist in getting him in to see a doctor to readjust his medication. judgmental, critical person. I was scared of seeing the reality of people who are homeless. I was scared. And I've gotten to learn some valuable lessons that they're just as scared as I am. <laughs> you know? Of judgment. You know? So. Because I realized that they're they're people, they, they're just like you and I, feelings and emotions, they just have addictions and, 
you know, a lot have mental problems and some is just circumstance, you know, they can't find proper housing. You know, um, we've got a boom right now in Edmonton and we have a lot of people from different provinces coming in. We don't have a lot of housing or they don't know about the March Shook housing, <laughs> you know, and these are not bad people, you know, a lot, you know, a lot of them, they just make bad choices like it, we all do, <laughs> you know, and sometimes it takes us down a bad road and just be, being able to have somebody who helps you. Um, get back up is the biggest key because it can be done. Well, the Bible says in Isaiah 6, verse 9, He said, Go and tell these people, Hear you indeed. There's people tonight that are hearing, but you understand not. Are you understanding that you have to give your life to Jesus? You've got to get Him in your heart you got to get him in the inside so he can begin to work from the inside out.